Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about this toaster here inside of the Rube Goldberg Learning Kit. We're gonna talk about kind of its surface features at a high level, and then we're actually gonna dive a little bit into the code so that you can play with it and do some really, really cool things with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just show you what this thing specifically does. So this setup is just gonna have this ball roll down here and bump into the toaster. And when it's hit, you'll see toast come out of it. Like so. All right, so that's pretty cool, but let's go ahead and dive a little bit further into seeing what this thing can really do. First and foremost, let's talk about where we can actually get this. So what I'm gonna do is just select this and hit Control B on the keyboard as in beta, and it'll actually open up to the folder where this thing is actually housed inside of all of this. So we're inside of content, blueprints, tools, and this is where the toaster is. And real quick, if you need to, just go up into content, and if you do a search for just BP toaster, you can find it there too. Simply just drag and drop this into the world. And if you get this little message, go ahead and just say okay, and then you're good to go. Now I'm not gonna need the second one, so let's go ahead and just delete that out of there. Now the first thing we wanna do once we have a toaster in the level is to select it, just left click on it. Now what we're gonna do is inside of the details panel over here on the right, I'm gonna be looking for this section right here that says default. If you don't see this, make sure that you either have the general or the all filter toggled on right here. Now the first section in here is our launch force. So let's go ahead and talk about that first. And you noticed as soon as we played this and something bumped into it, the toast just kind of shot up, not really exciting. But what we can do is click and drag right here in this value or type in a value and we can actually change this. So if we crank this up to, I don't know, right about there or so, I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit, go ahead and hit the play button. We should see something very different and that toast should go much higher, which is very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and stop that. But it doesn't end here. What we can do is with this one selected, we can go ahead and just turn this using our rotation tool and we can try to aim it through that window that you see over here. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how that works out. And, oh, it's just a little bit shy, not a bad shot. So to get a better idea of where that toast is going to be landing, we can actually use this right here. So if we toggle on the debug projectile, we'll get a little particle system that actually shows where it's going to be going, which can be really helpful. So now if we crank this up, we should be able to see that, hey, I can actually make it through there. So now when we hit play, we should be able to see that that toast will fall that trajectory all the way across. Now, once we've actually figured out where it's going, we can go ahead and toggle this off when we do the simulation like so, and it'll still behave exactly the same. So perfect, that works really nicely. Next, I wanna go ahead and talk about this one right here, this mesh to spawn. Right now we're spawning toast, but what's really cool about this is if you click on this dropdown, any static mesh, let me repeat that, any static mesh that happens to be inside of this project, you can go ahead and launch out of this. And there are a bunch. So if you click on this, you'll see that there are literally a ton of pieces inside of here that we can play with. Now, the reason that I wanted to repeat that is because any static mesh that you bring in, say a 3D scanned version of yourself or any animal that you may have inside of your house, you could bring in as a static mesh and actually launch out of here. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pick something like, oh, the table. Let's just do the table. So I'll go ahead and search in there and the table. So now what we can do is turn on this debug projectile and you can see that we have a table here and you can see how big it's going to be in relation to well, everything else inside of the world. So let's go ahead and hit play this time and see what happens now. Very cool. Now, something you may or may not have noticed is that there are actually two tables that came out of here. And if I cannot get stuck on the wall here, there we go. We don't necessarily want to have two tables come out. And we'll talk about how to adjust that later when we go into the code. Now, before we actually move on, I wanna talk about these little buttons over here on the right-hand side. These will actually just set everything back to its default. So if I just click on this, you'll see that it should go back to the toast, perfect. So now let's go ahead and play with this section right here, this simulate physics. So what this will do when it's toggled on is to allow me to pick this up off of the ground. So I'll go ahead and select it, make sure that I'm using my move tool and make sure that my move tool is actually set to global and I'll pick this up. So now if we move this out of the way, what'll happen is because this is now actually simulating physics, it'll drop and then when it hits the table, it, then it'll actually launch that piece of toast. So let's go ahead and hit play. Now you'll notice that the trajectory is actually off because that is actually being pulled from when the game starts, not from where it's actually going to be landing. So a little pro tip, just kind of keep that in mind that it's not gonna show it at where it's gonna land, only where it was when the game started. And to finish this off, let's go ahead and talk about actually having just one object come out of here versus having two and why this may be something that you want. So for example, I've gone ahead and set it up so that this will actually shoot out a boot. So when we hit play, you'll kind of see what happens. They get 
kind of stuck on each other. They don't really go where I want them. So it may be better to have just one of them come out. So to address that, simply just go ahead and select the toaster. And inside the details panel, you'll find a whole bunch of little buttons that say edit and blueprint. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on those. Now, when the blueprint editor opens, you should see something like this. Now, if you don't, make sure that you are in this section right here that is actually labeled event graph. It's a little tab, you can just click on it right there. The other thing that's important to understand is that if you right mouse click and drag anywhere inside the graph, you can actually pan to get from place to place, and you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in to a specific location where your cursor happens to be at, which is really kind of nice. So if I need to zoom in over there, I can do that. Now, the thing that we're looking for specifically is this node right here, the sequence inside of this spawns toast. And this then zero and then one is quite literally this hole and this hole. So what we're gonna do inside of here is just disconnect this then one. So hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and click on this little pin and that will actually disconnect it. And now you can see that this section down here is no longer connected. So perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and just compile and save this. Compile and save and go back into here. And now when we play this, we should only get one boot. Now, sometimes it does get stuck depending on how big the object is. So next, let's go ahead and talk about how we can adjust that by adjusting the sockets inside of the static mesh. And there are a couple ways of actually getting to this static mesh. So let's go ahead and use the content drawer. So let's go ahead and go down here to the bottom left-hand corner and open this one up. And inside of here, we're gonna make sure that we are inside of the content section. And we're gonna go ahead and just search up here for toaster body. And this one right here, this S toaster body is the one that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and just double click on this to open up the static mesh editor. And inside of here, you can see that we have two slots. We've got a slot A and a slot B. And let's get a little bit closer to this so you can see this. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to move these two around. So you can just click on them and move them up and down. So the higher these are, the more likely it is that these boots aren't gonna actually get stuck on the collision of this guy right here. So once we've actually got that done, we'll go ahead and save this one, so like so. Now, before we go all the way back and test this, let me talk about the code that's actually running this. Because if we go inside of the BP toaster, which I have open right here, you will see that right here, this node is actually getting a specific socket. So let me go ahead and zoom in on that. And you can see that, hey, socket B is the one that's actually being used right here. And I named it slot B. So inside of toaster body, you can see that slot B, this one right here, no matter where this is, this is where that thing is actually going to be ejected from. So real quick, let's talk about what these sockets can be used for because in here, we're just using it to say, hey, this is where we want the toast to be coming out of. However, if we're working with a character inside of a video game, we could say, hey, this is where we want an armor piece or a backpack to attach to this specific mesh, be it static or skeletal. All right, so now that everything's saved, let's go ahead and play this and that boot should not get stuck. It should actually spawn further up above, so perfect. So within this video, we've covered quite a bit. So this toaster has a lot of really interesting superpowers here inside of the default. We can actually change its force, what's actually being spawned. We can set it to simulate physics. We can actually see where things are going to be launched from. If we're looking inside the code, we actually understand that this section right here is actually what's spawning specific items. And we can tell where those items are being spawned from because we're getting the socket location from here inside of our actual static mesh editor. So. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below. We'll take a look at it and get back to you when we can. And don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.